Welcome back to BWO Daily, your source for news in sports entertainment and the world of professional wrestling from your boys at Busted Wide Open. My name is Nick Howell. And I am Sir Ian Dangerous, and welcome to the show today. We got to talk about the fact that it looks like WWE's backstage might be done. That's right. It looks like FS1 is pulling back on some of its programming, probably thanks to the pandemic and thanks to the following falling ratings, but uh, they are they are paring everything down, and one of the first things to go was their boxing program, and it looks like WWE's backstage, which they said that they are they're 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 taking a hiatus. They're looking at re, the reformatting it, but everyone who is involved with the show has been saying, "Yeah, we're pretty sure it's done." So um, maybe they're, maybe don't bury it on FS1. Well, they again. The idea was to be on all the different Fox programming, have a presence across all the media, and it was. And honestly, it was doing decent numbers. It had a high of one hundred eighty thousand people watching it. It averaged around one forty five. So it was, it wasn't doing bad. Like it was doing all right. But the problem is, is that they have they have to fire about twenty people who were involved in the production of it. Um, so that's that's unfortunate. That they're now out of a job, but they're paring back. Uh, Fox said that uh, they're. Their decision was to better address the needs of their business, so they've been eliminating some of the <laughs> some of the positions in their production department, and that was one of the things that went bye bye. It's costing us more money to operate this than it is bringing in in revenue, is what Pretty that much. translates into. Yeah, and it's and we'd rather put something up that's going to just be, you know, cheap for us to have, and then it'll bring in some ratings. So, and we'll get the the advertising revenue anyway. Right. Um, the, we blew our wad on a CM Punk contract. <laughs> well, and that's people were wondering what's up with CM Punk, what's up with the people who were on backstage. Yeah. Of course, CM Punk was employed by Fox, mm -hmm. not by WWE. There was no contract in place with WWE. In fact, WWE had stopped promoting that he was even on the show, probably indicating they're not really interested in working with him right now. So... Uh, this comes. This all comes from John Uran to the Sports Business Journal in terms of uh, FS1 scaling back its production, and uh, honestly, the the thing that I'm more wondering about, and it is getting out there, people are starting to question, is does this mean that Fox is mad at WWE or they're having second thoughts about that billion dollar investment? Um, and I would say probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you don't but, think that's a daily or monthly or quarterly conversation that happens, you're wrong. It happens, right? right? Uh, I don't want to say we're going all the way back to the days of sci-fi, but uh, USA <laughs> might be uh, in the not-too-distant future for SmackDown. Yeah. Well, they're not going to drop that much on SmackDown and let it go that quickly, I don't think. But this is, I think this is more of a sign that they're tightening their britches around the edges, and this pro yeah. WWE's program just happened to be in the way. I don't see this as a big sign. It's all over. WWE and Fox are splitting. I don't see that yet. Not by a long shot. I see this as more being, hey, man, <laughs> belts are getting tightened all over. This just happened to be one of the things that got squeezed out in that old belt tightening. So, uh, so yes, take that, take that for what it's worth. Tonight will be a rerun. They were supposed to have a new show of Backstage Tonight with Bailey on it. It will not be airing. It will be probably a rerun of some sort, and then that's going to be yeah. that. Uh, also, that's that on Charlotte Flair. If you didn't watch Raw last night, you may not know, but there was an injury angle last night, and Charlotte Flair is actually leaving to go have surgery, undisclosed what that surgery might be. Apparently, it's not, uh, it's not a serious surgery. It's, it's, it's an elective surgery, so... Given Charlotte's history, who knows? Could be any number of things. Uh, but there are varying reports about when we can expect her back. Dave Meltzer says SummerSlam. Uh, over at Talk Sports, Alex McCarthy says Royal Rumble. Whoa. He says, that, yeah, so wild, wild variance in time frame. Uh, Alex McCarthy says his source says there is 0% chance that Charlotte is back by SummerSlam. Uh, there's also the undercurrent of a rumor that she wants some time off. She wants to have a little bit of personal time. I can't imagine why. With Andrade going down to main event, working main event, who knows? Maybe they want to have a little vacation. So uh, no timetable set on when Charlotte is returning. 
for everyone who was saying there was just too much Charlotte on WWE TV recently, uh, drink that. There medicine. you go. Here it yeah, comes. There, <laughs> here you go. Uh, what What do you think the women's division is going to be without Charlotte right now? A couple of comments uh, from my side, from a business perspective. Um, <laughs> one, this is what happens when you sit the fate of a company on one person's shoulders and you spend too much time focusing on one person, you're going to have to scramble a little bit to make sure that you've got programming and or feuds and or storylines to insert when all of a sudden you don't you can't take up 20 plus minutes right with one person on all three of your shows. Now you have two people, week. your tag champions can now be on all three shows. <laughs> right. The last the last two four horsewomen. The other can four horsewomen. Everything. One's out pregnant, one's getting <laughs> Elective surgery. The right. other one is getting. We'll do air quotes. the uh, The other two are basically now doing everything now. Plus Oscar, right? Yes. So <laughs> I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to browbeat us people until uh, we come. Around. Here we go. At some point, we have to move on from the four horsewomen of NXT and build other talent. I like what they're doing with Oscar. More, please. You You've got Alexa Bliss, Nikki Cross. It feels like they're starting to warm up on Dana Brooke. Uh, they're definitely trying to do something with Liv Morgan. Not sure if that was a Paul Heyman project, and that's going to go by the wayside. Lacey Evans has been, a, has been a work in progress for a while that I think is right on the edge. Sonya Deville is poised to explode on SmackDown. They just need to take off the leash yes. and let Sonya run wild. So I actually think they've got a pretty – and, and that's just a few of them. I mean, there's well, they've a few got more we can, it. We can I'm not making the argument it's they don't. all there. <laughs> We're, we just we. How much longer are we going to click, click, click up the roller coaster hill <laughs> until we actually go over the summit? Right. So I, 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 I get it. I want all these ladies to be uber successful, and they can mm. be. We've now got two of the four. I don't want to say out of the way. That sounds mean, but I mean they're <laughs> off, do, off doing other things, right? Taking <laughs> breaks for for various reasons. Opportunities abound, ladies. Right now is the time to the shine. brass ring. The brass ring's lowering. Yeah, it's waiting. The, the, the queen is the queen's going to take a break. Yeah, it's your time to shine, uh, and I'm looking forward to Charlotte coming back and everyone remembering why she was so awesome. You know, yeah. absence makes makes the heart grow fonder. Y'all need some time to remember that there's a reason Charlotte is the face of the women's division. Uh, so that is the news, Nick. We have to give a quick happy birthday here to Billy Kay. Are you joking me? Billy Kay is turning 31 today, and Brandy Rhodes. Brandy Rhodes is turning 37. Happy birthday. To Happy both of those birthday. ladies. And uh, that is the news for today. Well, thank you very much, Sir Ian Dangerous. And thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of BWO Daily. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel by pounding that red button and making sure you click the little notification bell set to all right next to it to make sure you don't miss an episode every single day, Monday through Friday, every single week of BWO Daily. Plus all of our live shows that we do, you can find us over anywhere podcasts are found. You can also, we live stream uh, our main shows here on Tuesday evenings, later tonight actually, and Saturday afternoon afternoons where we also do our patron mailbag episode our, our version of an ama where our patrons ask us questions and you guys get to hear what we have to say uh make sure you get into our community discord as well we've got fighter fest coming up on sunday we're gonna have live chat uh all throughout the show so make sure you get into that as well but my name is nick howell you can find me on twitter at data center dude and i am sir ian dangerous you can find me on twitter at sir ian dangerous and we will see you guys next time